Hello my pupilos and welcome to a new Spanish lesson with me, Sebas. Today we will learn the uses of the verb haber. Remember that we are in the spoken language series, so now we won't learn any grammar or conjugation. We will just use what we have learned so far so we can start speaking. Because as you know, the final purpose of this course is to speak, not to keep studying grammar and making exercises. That's the boring part. So, before starting, I would recommend to you to watch my last video about the conjugation of the verb haber. Here I also speak a little bit about the topic of today. So, as you probably watched in my last video, the verb haber has two main ways of using. As an auxiliary verb to make some verbal conjugations and in an impersonal form to express existence. Since this is a video for students from the level A1 and A2, the verbal tenses you should already know are the preterito perfecto and the preterito plus cuan perfecto. Let's see some examples. Claudia y Daniel han trabajado en esta empresa cinco años. Claudia and Daniel have worked in this company for five years. Claudia y Daniel han trabajado en esta empresa por cinco años. Claudia and Daniel have worked in this company for five years. Cuando entregué el examen, Diego ya había terminado. When I handed over the test, Diego had already finished. Cuando entregué el examen, Diego ya había terminado. When I handed over the test, Diego had already finished. <laughs> so, these are the verbal times we should already know. Now, let's see some other which we will see in some other videos. So, these are also uses in the indicative mode. Condicional perfecto. Yo habría jugado. Pretérito anterior. Yo hube jugado. Futuro perfecto. Yo habré jugado. And this one are in subjunctive mode. Pretérito plus con perfecto. Yo hubiera jugado. O yo hubiese jugado. Futuro perfecto. Yo hubiere jugado. Gerundio compuesto. Habiendo jugado. Wow, as you see, the verb haber is used in many verbal times. So I hope you learn all of them with Sebas. <laughs> Now, let's see the impersonal form. As you probably seen in my last video, we say impersonal because these kind of sentences don't have any subject. So we don't have any number or person variation. We will always use the third person in the singular form. And remember that in the present simple we have an exception. We use the conjugation I instead of the conjugation A. Veamos algunos ejemplos. Hay un lapicero en el escritorio. There is a pen in the desk. Hay un lapicero en el escritorio. There is a pen in the desk. Había cuatro perros en el parque. There were four dogs in the park. Había cuatro perros en el parque. There were four dogs in the park. Habrá muchas personas a cargo. There will be a lot of people in charge. Habrá muchas personas a cargo. There will be a lot of people in charge. Here, I would like to emphasize the fact that the impersonal form has no person or number variation. Please repeat after me. No person and number variation. No person and number variation. I'm telling you this because I would have to say that at least 90% of the native speakers make this mistake. So let's see some examples to clarify this. Habían cinco gatos. Ah, mis oídos. The right form is había cinco gatos. Hubieron tres perros. Ah, qué horrible. The right form is hubo tres perros. Han habido varios trabajos. Please stop. The right way is ha habido varios trabajos. Habrán muchas sorpresas. Oh, come on. The right form is habrá muchas sorpresas. Now, There are some other secondary uses of the verb haber. Let's see some of them. We can use the impersonal form I plus haber in the infinitive mode to express necessity. Let's see some examples. Hay que estudiar. El examen es mañana. We need to study. Tomorrow is the exam. Hay que estudiar. Mañana es el examen. We need to study. Tomorrow is the exam. Habrá que entrenar muy duro. La competencia será muy reñida. We will have to train very hard. The competition will be very fucked. Habrá que entrenar muy duro. 
la competencia será muy reñida. We will have to train hard. The competition will be very fought. The next one is mostly used in a poetic way and it's when we use the following formula. Veamos un ejemplo. He de volver a mi tierra. I will have to come back to my homeland someday. He de volver a mi tierra. I will have to come back to my homeland someday. So this is to express the necessity that someday, in an uncertain future, I will have to come back to my homeland. He de volver a mi tierra. And the last one for today is another way to express existence or location with the following formula. This is also a poetic way, so you will probably find this more in novels than in the spoken language. He aquí el dinero. Con esto pago la deuda. Here the money. With this, I pay the debt. He aquí el dinero. Con esto pago la deuda. Here the money. With this, I pay the debt. He allí la llave. Te la puedes llevar. The keys are there. You can take them away. He allí la llave. Te la puedes llevar. The keys are there. You can take them away. Y bueno, mis queridos pupilos, eso es todo por hoy. If you have any question, opinion, or recommendation, or maybe you would like to give us an example with the verb haber, you could put it in the comments below. And if you like this video, thumb up and subscribe. Soy Sebas y hasta la próxima.